<laughs> it's so great to have you here tonight. Great also because I didn't realise you guys were such good friends. Yes. Yeah. Bring Courtney a birthday present. It's her birthday today. Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> Look, we even coordinated out. I know, it's amazing. <laughs> How long have you guys been and... friends for? I met at Mardi Gras yeah. here in Sydney. Yeah. Um, Almost 10 years ago. Yeah, it was you were yeah. performing. You were doing the closing show. Yes. Which is at like 10 a.m., which I stayed for and watched. Like, I was like in the front row, like, hi. You were the only person coherent. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else was like, party. <laughs> yeah. Is that because I saw a picture on your Facebook today of you guys together and I was struggling to work out what was going on here. Is this you pregnant? <laughs> You know what this was? This was um, Fergie her baby from the Black Eyed Peas, yeah. her baby shower. I was performing, I was singing a song, and there was all these paparazzi outside. So Adam and our friend Simon and I went outside where the paparazzi could see, and I pretended to be pregnant, and they all snapped photos. And one Japanese blog ran a story saying that this was Fergie, and Adam <laughs> congratulating Fergie on her baby. And as we, we knew what we were doing, we were we like, exactly I bet what you we think you're doing. Fergie, let's, let's do it. <laughs> Hey, congratulations on your new song, Roses. Thank uh, you. It's fantastic. Well, tell us, what's it about? It's sort of like a Valentine's Day gone wrong. Right. Um, yes. You know, like where you're, you're, you're maybe dating somebody and, and you're trying to strive towards intimacy and doing all the things right. And then when the special day comes around, all you get was roses. That's it. Just a bunch of flowers. flowers. No, <laughs> not the box of Cadbury roses. No love, no actual intimacy, no eye contact even, just right. flowers. It's good. Good thing. It's not enough. It's nice that you waited till after Valentine's Day to release that. That's <laughs> very... No, it came well, out before. Came out before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking of the album. Um, and also, good of Queen to just come along and accompany you on your promotional tour. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> that done it. Um, in your own mind, how separate is the Queen stuff from your solo stuff? Well, I've been doing it for a while. It's been about eight years that we've been working together. And at this point, it feels like such a, like a, it's like muscle memory. I can, I can get on stage with them. We can look at each other. We know each other really well. And it's an amazing opportunity to perform great music for amazing audiences. Mm. But the solo stuff, what's so great about that is it's me getting to create something of my own. It's me getting to to call the shots and put my own life into song. And so they, they satisfy two different things, really. Uh, you wouldn't let them bleed? Well, sometimes we do a, a song of mine. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, no, Brian that's... and Roger are like, yeah, let's play this one. And I think with this project, with Velvet, I intentionally and unintentionally tried to bring the two worlds closer together, oh. sonically. So I went back to the past and I referenced material that was a bit more timeless and retro. Right. Um, I wanted to give the album a little more organic kind of a sense and I wanted to hear real musicians playing and give it a little more soul. Um, and there's definitely records of Queen that kind of cross over into that space. So how far would you... Oh, sorry. I was yeah. gonna, do you run anything by, like Brian made? Like, would he listen to Roses would you, when you, when, when you yeah. record it? Would, yeah. yeah, as the demos are sort of coming along, I'm on the plane and I have a pair of Bose headphones and they go right on Brian. Somebody's doing okay, isn't yeah. he? <laughs> Got the Bose headphones. <laughs> I'm getting a free shipment after this show. I'm getting yeah. three bars too. <laughs> would you ever get any of them to play on a track? Or would they have before. Doing? Brian right. actually played on a track on my last album right. uh, called Lucy, a song called Lucy, yeah. They, and they were really, really helpful. Like, I would show them a demo and ask them questions and they would give suggestions. And mm. I mean, they're like family. Mm. It's great. And they're very supportive of the solo thing, which is really cool. Yeah, great. Yeah. Well, guitarist Nara Rogers, you're talking about musicians, uh, featured on Roses. And he has worked with Madonna, Daft Punk, David Bowie. And yeah. this is what he tweeted. He said, I really wouldn't say it if it weren't true. Working with Adam Lambert was one of the most organically perfect jams I've had since... Bowie. Oh, wow. How do you remain level-headed after that little tweet? <laughs> That's very sweet. Um, you know, we've done a lot together now. We, um, we wrote a song together for Avicii's album with Avicii uh, that came out a couple years ago. We've uh, performed live together. I've, I've gone on stage with Sheik and him and done, actually sang Let's Dance. Um, we've done other things. He was on a, a song of mine on my last album. And he's lovely. He's full of great stories. He's really, really down to earth. And he's been through a lot, yeah. you know, and he's got a lot to, a lot of wisdom to give. Yeah. You know, it's, it's listening to you talk about legends of music in this way, is, it's kind of sickening. I mean, <laughs> Queen, <laughs> Queen of just family. Oh, yeah, he's a lovely guy. <laughs> no, trust he's me, there are that. moments, there are moments where I realise the gravity of the situations that we find ourselves in and I... I have to kind of talk myself down or else I'll, I'll fall apart. Okay, you that's know? better. That's what the, I needed. The lead, the lead singer's job is to be cocky and kind yeah. of, you know, in charge. But I definitely had my moments. Yeah, yeah. When we opened the Oscars last year, um, I had to do some mental trickery and tell myself, this is just like any other gig. Right. Look at the lights. It's fine. <laughs> and then nervous? I got off stage and yeah. was like, whoo! 
Yeah. Speaking of just any other gig, on Sunday you performed at the Firefight fundraiser, yes. which yes. is epic, and you did a recreation of the 1985 Live Aid set. Did you think, like, were you, were you tossing up whether to do that or not, or was it just a no-brainer? When we agreed to do this special, um, we were sitting around and it just came up as an idea, and it was brilliant. I mean, we all went, ooh, that sounds kind of interesting. Um, and we, we kept it sort of a surprise because we thought, let's just see who picks it up, you know, and see if people react to it. We didn't want to set the expectations <laughs> yes. too high, you know. Yeah. Do you go into a performance like with absolute confidence that the crowd is going to love every single thing you do? Like, you must be watching the band before you and thinking, we've got this covered. Like, we've got yeah. this covered. <laughs> I, I was watching Five Seconds of Summer, who were awesome, so by the way. I love those guys. Yeah. Um, and I, could, I was watching from off stage, so I was kind of watching the crowd, and the crowd was pumped. Yeah. So that was a good sign. Yeah. And we had just done our show, our Sydney show, the night before at the same venue on the same stage. You're on ground now. So we were like, there. yeah, you were there. Yeah, there. that's right. Yeah. And, and I've, I wasn't nervous. I felt no. good. I yeah. might have had an adult beverage beforehand, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for Firefight as well. Yes. Incredible um, yes. generosity for our nation. Thank you. Available to pre-order now. Details are on our website. Would you please thank Adam Lambert? Yeah.